It's the freak phone. And here's the party freak. Freddy Freaker. Dance a new sensation. Grabbing the nation. Doing the freak. Call now. 1-900-490-FREAK. Join the party. The fast and easy way. You hear what's scamming from New York to L.A. Call now. 1-900-490-FREAK. everyone today we're gonna get freaky no no didn't like that it's uh i'm sorry it's just a regular episode it's uh it's about 1900 numbers i personally wasn't big on 1900 numbers when i was a kid i was a little young for that craze but there was a commercial for one at least that had a big effect on me and it was the freddy krueger 1900 number Freddy on your phone. So dial this number now if you dare. When I first saw the commercial for it, I thought, who would want to call Freddy Krueger? That's like inviting Freddy Krueger into your house. Don't do that. I mean, like, what could I have to say to Freddy Krueger? But then it hit me. Hi, Freddy Krueger. It's me, Lydia Bug. Um, I saw your name come up on my parents' television, and I just thought I'd give you a call and say, Don't come to my house! Don't come to my house! Don't do it! Don't do it! I don't want to die! Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, you don't have to return my call, and please don't haunt my dreams. Have a good night. And that's why I'm still alive today. Looking back at 1-900 numbers today, it's kind of hard for me, and I think for most people, to figure out who would call them, but my extensive research has revealed there wasn't much shit to do before the internet. If you were home alone and bored on a Friday night, why not call the freak phone? That weird commercial is actually doing its job really well because you want to know what the heck Freddy Freaker is and what will happen if you call him. And you know, if it will be bad, <laughs> because it feels like it would be bad. There used to be a 1-900 number for every human emotion. You had your sexy numbers, your silly numbers, your scary numbers, your sad numbers, your sports numbers. Sports is an emotion. Sometimes one number could cover two emotions. For instance, the GLOW hotline was a little sexy and a little sports. For a good time, call the gals of GLOW. And the Freddie Pumpkin hotline was a little silly and a little scary. Children and people who wanted to be scared were two huge target audiences for 1-900 numbers. And if you could scare children, even better. Other than Freddy Krueger and Freddy Pumpkin, there was 1-900 Evil, 1-900 Creep, 1-900 Monster, and there was a Santa Claus hotline whose number was 606-6666, so I'm counting it. Call 1-900-660-6666. Most of these numbers just told scary stories. Like for instance, the Freddy Krueger hotline didn't connect me to Freddy Krueger at all. It was just him telling like scary stories on a loop, sort of like a mother goose, but for murder. Okay, kids, today we're going, ah, ah, ah damn it, ah, stupid, stupid gloves. Ah, just, ah, it's, ah, I ripped the paint. This is so, why don't I just use my other hand? Probably the most infamous of 1-900 numbers is the celebrity hotline. There was a time when every celebrity, and I mean every celebrity, had a 1-900 number. Ice-T had a 1-900 number. This is Ice-T, and I'm just cooling out waiting on you to call me on the Ice Hotline. Here's your chance to connect to Ice-T. So you might be asking yourself, who would call Ice-T's 1-900 number? I know I was at first, but then I thought about it a little more and, well, do you follow Ice-T on Twitter? Because 1.3 million people do, and all of those people are interested in the thoughts and feelings of Ice-T. Side note, if you don't follow Ice-T on Twitter, you totally should. His liberal use of LOL when tweeting memes is inspired. I mean, come on, you know you want to know what made Ice-T LOL, but if it were the 90s, you would have had to pay $2 for the first minute and 45 cents for each additional minute to find out, so thanks, Twitter. Other celebrity 1-900s include Bobby Brown, Kiss, Warrant, and both Corys, Heyman Feldman. These hotlines usually play pre-recorded messages, usually around two minutes, or sometimes snippets of music on a loop. According to an Archive New York Times article from 1989, the Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff's hotline was just the two of them sort of relating personal anecdotes and adventures to each other, like their first trip to Hawaii. 
Sounds kind of like today's celebrity podcasts. The Fresh Prince and DJ Jazzy Jeff's hotline was originally established just to promote their album, He's a DJ, I'm the Rapper. At the time, Jive Records considered hotlines such a valuable promotional tool that they were willing to forego their portion of the profits to get it up and running, which they probably regretted later when it was getting 100,000 calls a week and executives were making bets as to whether or not its income was going to surpass the 2.5 million they'd made in album sales. In fact, hotlines were a great promotional tool and they weren't just used by musicians either. The horrifying E.T. ripoff Mac and Me had one, Bill and Ted had one, and my personal favorite, the full two minute long commercial for Little Monsters the Hotline, which included a very slow rap and a cameo appearance from a chorus of all white children, as well as a promise that you could win Fred Savage's autograph. Really early 1-900 numbers were just the internet, like the Gator Bait hotline allowed Florida Gator fans to hear games and scores and interviews from coaches. There was a hotline you could call to see what the weather was like if you wanted to go surfing. Basically, all of the functions we now use the internet for, including dating, were first available via the phone, which is kind of cool. I feel like it shows that humanity has always craved the kind of connection that we have now. You know, like kind of a connection, but not really. Like, let's be best friends, but also don't look at me. I don't think we should make fun of 1-900 numbers as much as we do. I mean, it's kind of like cavemen making fun of Neanderthals for huddling together for warmth. Like, those guys don't have fire yet, and they were just doing the best that they can with the resources that they have. The fall of the 1-900 number wasn't just caused by the rise of the internet, though. Part of the issue was that pretty much anyone can make a 1-900 number and make a lot of money really quickly, so it attracted a lot of scammers. Scammers would put long delays in messages or make them purposely hard to hear, and then when you finally did get to them, sometimes they were just generic, easily accessible information. And remember how I said that children were a huge target audience for 1-900 numbers? Yeah, that made for some pretty bad optics when something happened like the show that urged kids to hold their phone up to the TV and then played a dial tone that automatically dialed a 1-900 number with a direct line to Santa. Santa here! Call 1-900-660-6666! So, the government ended up stepping in to make sure that any parent who got stuck with a huge phone bill from a child with a debilitating case of Hulkamania wouldn't end up having to pay for it. This, combined with a dial-up porn law that severely limited access to adult content via 1-900 numbers, plus the rise of the internet, was what eventually killed the 1-900 number. Or did it? Of course, porn hotlines didn't go quietly into the long dark night. They just switched to 800 numbers, which require you to give your credit card first. Yay for porn! While actual 1-900 numbers might be mostly dead, the spirit of the 1-900 is still alive and strong. In fact, there's one that I still call kind of a lot. Okay, so this is the number for the Call and Oats helpline. If you ever have an emergency where you need to hear a Hall and Oats Welcome song. Welcome to Call and Oats, your emergency Hall and Oats helpline. To hear one on one, please press one. To hear it go, please press Always two. Always two. It just plays whatever Hall and Oats song you choose. It's pretty great. There's also a They Might Be Giants hotline that's been running since 1983 with just a few brief breaks. It just connects you directly to a They Might Be Giants song and it's free other than normal phone charges. Singer Shamir set up a relationship hotline in 2015 to promote his single, Call It Off. Callers could leave a voicemail and the singer might call them back with his advice, or they could just listen to clips of the song. And your favorite podcast, Bunny Ears, even has a number you can call and leave a voicemail that might get played on the podcast. Oh shit, it's Macaulay Culkin! Yeah, that's right. He called my phone. <laughs> Fuck you. Hey, Mac. It's Lydia Bug. Um, I'm the one that you usually call the girl with the hair. I uh, came over to your house that one time and found all of those dead parrots. Um, and I just wanted to say thanks for hiring me. And... I'm really excited to be calling your hotline.
but I think the best modern allegory for 1-900 numbers is a texting service currently being used by social media stars Jake Paul and Lily Pons. For you see, millennials don't want to talk to anyone on the phone, not even someone famous, but they still want a closer connection to the people that they idolize, or at least the illusion of one. So a company called Community is trying to provide that service while also definitely not collecting a bunch of personal data from kids. And while that might not sound very Hey Arnold at all, I think overall 1-900 numbers were pretty Hey Arnold. I mean, you can't blame the medium for someone misusing it. People get scammed online all the time and we're not like, oh, the internet, that whole thing's a scam, right? And like some of the very first photographs were pornography. We're not like, pictures, those are all smut. In reality, I kind of think that the heralness of 1-900 numbers has gotten lost in a few people's bad intentions and misinformation. They were a way to feel connected to people we were interested in without actually having to make a connection with another human person, which as we all now know, is the best way to communicate with someone. So thanks 1-900 numbers, and if you have a chance, give us a call at 845-EZE-HOAX. So that's it for this week. Be sure to like and subscribe, and you can always look up more articles and stuff from us that are very funny on bunnyears.com. You can follow Bunny Ears on Twitter at Bunny Ears Web. You can follow me on Twitter at You Know Lydia. I'm so bad at the outro part. Have a good night. And then I just crawl out of frame. <laughs> Never come back. You are freaking lumberjack! <laughs> oh god. Gracias por ver mi video. Fruto, Emilio, muchas fiestas de cabal. Problem